Hello. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the joint another joint meeting mm -hmm. of the Hong Kong Philatelic Society and Hong Kong Study Circle. And uh, as advertised um, in the uh, in the newsletter as well as on the Hong know. Kong Philatelic Society's know. website, tonight's uh, theme. Uh, tonight's meeting theme is going to be uh, wartime era of uh, Hong Kong and China. So uh, I see that we now have um, six, 17 people uh, attending the meeting. And uh, I think we have some promises that uh, some people will want to have things to show. So um, may I ask who would like to show first? Huh? Simon. Yes. Okay. So if you want to show something, can um, you uh, share your screen? Yeah, uh, I am. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let, I'm just. Let, I'm let going to uh, I, enable the, the 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 button for for multiple participants can share simultaneously, so that all of you can can share something by pressing the uh, the green tab at the bottom of your screen. Okay. So uh, who would like to show okay. first? Yeah. Yeah. yeah me, Simon. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Um, so, uh, Simon Choi. Mm -hmm. Can I? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, you, you hear me? Yeah, I can it's, hear you very it's well. My, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, let, let me say a few words first. Uh, I admit you admit that I am not knowledgeable in, the, in this subject, but uh, I would like to take this opportunity to learn something. So, I take out a few uh, covers. Uh, which uh, I believe is relevant to today's topic. And then uh, this morning, I while I, I, I was having a, a business meeting in my office, I started to do some uh, online research and do some studying uh, to, to trying to write up something for, 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 for uh, to show the couples in this meeting. So uh, please bear with me if, if uh, some of the material or some of the description uh, are not correct and please point it out to me. And uh, yeah, I, I really would like to uh, learn something new. Okay, let me start to share my uh, slides. Okay, can you see? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, first of all, uh, regarding the um, wartime air mail, the first thing I can uh, uh, find out is, is, is that there was a wartime surcharge of $1 per half ounce. Uh, starting uh, immediately uh, when, the, uh, when Europe uh, 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 started the World War II in September 1939, and the GPO imposed a surcharge of $1 per half ounce uh, for, for all Imperial Airways mills. And this cover, uh, uh, in, in fact, is uh, uh, rated under that uh, 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 surcharge uh, $1 for European destinations. So the original rate uh, was $1.2 and then uh, with the surcharge it was uh, $2.2, okay? And uh, it got uh, passed, by, passed the sense of Hong Kong for in triangle and uh, the route uh, should be uh, BOAC to London and then uh, stop it there uh, for airmail and uh, applied it to red bar and then uh, by surface to whole land. Okay, uh, next slide is, uh, okay. This one is uh, another example for the $1 surcharge. Uh, the destination is, is uh, Sweden. And uh, this one is, uh, is earlier than the previous one. Uh, so you can uh, see that there's an instructional map by air to London only. Uh, and uh, it also got um, the two red bars indicating that uh, the, the air mail surface uh, terminated in London. And, uh, and in fact, in Hong Kong, uh, that, uh, that, that, that was a, a circular passed by sensor Hong Kong, but uh, I cannot see the, the number is not that clear. And uh, probably in Sweden, I guess maybe, uh, yeah, you, you, you will have a better knowledge than me. The, the label there opened by sensor 1785 uh, was applied in Sweden. Am I correct? Mm. Mm. Looks like Probably British. London. Looks like British. I name. think London. 
Yeah. yeah. A London. Okay. British okay. label. Yeah, it looks like British. Okay. Label. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next one. Um, this one is uh belongs to the period where the horseshoe a uh, horseshoe route started, and uh yeah, I think uh it is it is uh quite common that uh most most of you uh, should have known about the horseshoe route. <coughs> and uh, this is the period when the Bank of Peter Service uh, was still in operation. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it was still the, the $1.15 rate, uh, but uh, in addition, there, there was a 25 cent registration fee. And uh, according to uh, Mr. Duncan's uh, uh, great book, Hong Kong Air Mills, uh, it should be carried on the uh, Bank of Peter Service uh, leaving Hong Kong uh, on July. Uh, 28 of uh, 1940, uh, the flight number of H, uh, not, not HK, it should be uh, HB, uh, it should be right, HB258. Okay, uh, this one, um, as uh, the Bangkok Fitter Service uh, what was stopped uh, in October 40 due to some political problems of, of flights flying over uh, French into China and Bangkok. So mails from Hong Kong carried it, uh, were carried it to, to Singapore by, by sea uh, to catch up with the BOAC horseshoe uh, route. And this is one of the example uh, to Scotland with a $1.15 rate. And uh, there it's a, a receiver's uh, endorsement, uh, 8 July uh, 1941 uh, written on the cover, and so uh, the total time in transit uh, was 36 days. Okay, next one. Um, the size of the uh, sea, uh, sea route to Singapore, um, there was another um, connecting flight uh, to uh, Rangoon, offered by CNAC uh, via Chongqing to Rangoon. Uh, to Rangoon. And uh, yeah, and, and, and then from, from Rangoon, it uh, would catch up with the BOAC horseshoe route. And uh, this, uh, this uh, air, uh, air feeder service uh, while Rangoon uh, uh, with, is having first dispatch on 25th of October, 1940, and, oper and was operating to uh, the fall of Hong Kong in December, 1941. And the rate uh, was a little bit higher and um, increased from $1.15 to $1.50. And uh, there, 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 there is an uh, endorse, uh, endorsement wiring uh, type, typewriter uh, from typewriter written on, on, on the cover. Uh, this one is also uh, from BOAC, uh, but uh, this is uh, to uh, Bombay. And uh, uh, it was uh, using uh, the sea route to Singapore because the uh, Peter service uh, was stopped in October. And uh, from Singapore, it was carried via the BOAC uh, to Calcutta. And then from Calcutta, uh, it was carried to Bombay wireland land route. Uh, that then there is a, a sensor label open by uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, opened by sensor label, uh, should be from Bombay. And then uh, there's also a triangular pass the sensor mark there. The total days in transit uh, was 12 days. Uh, this one, uh, this one uh, also uh, from, from the uh, BOAC uh, Australia to, to uh, uh, Durban uh, horse route. Uh, but uh, this one is the, the Eastern extension. Uh, it was uh, carried a wire sea route to Singapore. And then uh, from Singapore, a uh, wire Pandas uh, in cooperation of BOAC to Batavia, uh, which is today's Jakarta. Uh, there are a few sensor marks there on the cover, not open by sensor in Hong Kong. And then the, the G and 23 in circle, I suppose it, uh, it, uh, they were from Singapore. And then um, the uh, sensor uh, label uh, together with the DEV6 uh, mark in red and also the uh, CPS essential 6 uh, should be from Batavia. And, and 
in, in fact, the, the, the circular date stem uh, is having the date of um, March 14. The original uh, posting day uh, was 19th of February. So the total shopping time uh, was 20, 23 days, uh, which uh, was <laughs> quite quite long <laughs> to me. <laughs> Maybe Simon, because of the war. Simon, I think the pass by census 64 is Singapore. Oh, Singapore. Okay. But, but if this is Singapore, then uh, the label and the DEV6 should be from Singapore. No, because no, they, they were from Batavia. Yeah, the, the sensor six was applied on, on top. It looks like it's underneath. Really? The DEV6 tied the label uh, to the cover. Yeah. The label looks like Dutch. So it's... it's, it's yeah. It is Dutch. The, yeah, it's Dutch. It's yeah. Whatever, yeah. So, so it must be from uh, Batavia. So it was censored on arrival. Uh, so what's this mark? This DEV six is uh, there, there must be a, must be a, a table. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and yeah, and yeah. But the sense mark, but the sense mark passed by sense sixty four is in uh in Singapore. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Under under the label. Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, sure. And yeah, yeah, that doesn't. Oh, oh, I, I mean the, the circular, the circular one, central six. Uh, that, that there was a date on it, uh, right? Which, uh, which is not quite clear uh, on, on the screen, but uh, when I uh, use uh, 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 some, some tools and <laughs> I, 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 I found out that uh, the exact date was uh, 14th of March. So is the total transit time is 23 days. Uh, yeah, where in fact it is quite long from, from Hong Kong to, to Batavia. Uh, maybe because of the irregular schedule of the ship uh, from Hong Kong to Singapore or, or the, the, the long time for, for, for taking the censorship in different places. Okay, uh, the last one I'm going to, to, to show um, is the, uh, uh, the Trans-Pacific and Transatlantic Route. And uh, I, I guess uh, because of, of the regularity of the emails uh, uh, for the Eurasia route, so um, the GPO started some uh, service. Uh, according to the Hong Kong Airmail book, uh, it mentioned that uh, it was an experimental service starting 12th of May, 1941. And uh, in fact, uh, it, uh, it's, and it was endorsed by sea to USA and then by air. So uh, it uh, is it has the correct rate of two dollar per half pounds and uh, yeah. And, and Simon, for the for this cover, thank you for showing it because this relates to what I will show later. Hopefully, if we have time. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this 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 rate mm. or this uh, service, which you're quite right about, two dollars C, and then air, uh, was introduced because of the suspension of the BOAC service uh, heading westbound to Europe. Okay. Uh, it was uh, uh, in May mm. 41, it was suspended uh -huh. uh, because oh. of the Iraq rebellion. Okay. And therefore mail, it was only for a very short time, therefore the word experimental. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an alternative uh, to, for people to send from Hong Kong. Okay. okay. Uh, more, yeah. more, more late, more later, hopefully. Huh. Thank okay. you. Okay. Right. Thank you. And that's all I, 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 I am showing. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, in fact, this is a good subject for me because uh, in fact, prior to this, I have no knowledge on on on, on emails. And uh, yeah, but uh, taking this opportunity, I, I, I hope that I can learn something from, from, from all of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Yes. Uh, any questions you want to ask uh, Simon regarding the covers? Okay, great. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, who's going to be next? Richard? I have, I, I have uh, two things. One is my own, which I can do a little bit later. I'm happy to do that. And I have one from uh, Chris Norton, which okay. is a short thing. Yes. I can try to do that. Yes, why don't you do that? Yeah. Right now, how many cooks do I do this? Um, where do I share my Okay. Good. Can you see that? Uh, not yet. Yeah. There, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Uh, uh, there are two items. One is. Uh, a postal history, and the other one is an interesting piece of ephemera. Mm -hmm. uh, both related to uh, CNAC, uh, China's National Carry, at that time. The, this one is uh, airmail from Taipo and is addressed. It comes from, my wife tells me, it comes from Mr. Fong of Taipo. And is addressed to uh, Kunming. Mm. Uh, it's dated uh, 26th of September, and it went from Taipo to the GPO. Interestingly, no Kowloon transit, uh, whereas if it had come in to Taipo, it would have come in and had it Kowloon transit. And it then went on the CNAC flight. Uh, out, uh, presumably on the 28th of September, but it's very difficult to follow these flights because it was just uh, chaos inside China at that particular time due to uh, Japanese incursions. Uh, the rate's 35 cents, which is a standard half ounce rate. So this is a rare example of branch post office airmail yeah. uh, pre-war uh, and particularly into China. And the wartime period, uh, this is the only example I know from Taipo. I know of another one from Taipo in August, so that was just before the war. That's item one. Thank you, Chris. Um, Item two is a bit more slightly unusual, I guess. And this is an envelope issued to Charles Thomas, uh, which had his ticket on the CNAC flight on the 24th of May uh, from Hong Kong to Rangoon. So, uh, of course, these uh, CNAC flights after the first one or two, I think, uh, they were all nighttime flights out of Kaitang, so that hopefully they didn't get shot down by Japanese fighters. And you can see his check-in time at Kaitang is 2 a.m. Uh, so the flight would have left, well, I think, I, uh, I can't quite remember, I think, they flew out at about three and then arrived at Chongqing at dawn, uh, or just after dawn, and then changed planes, and then he would have gone on the flight Chongqing, Kunming, uh, Linsi, and then Rangoon. Uh, on the back of this envelope is an interesting little note don't carry your cameras, uh, otherwise the, uh, the Chinese nationalists at that time would take them away from you when you were in China. This amused me because I can remember the first time I went to China, which was 1979, I think. Uh, it still had the same rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's it from, from Chris. Um, this, oh, the, one other thing, aspect of this little uh, uh, envelope 
is that later on, I hope to show you a cover that went on this flight. Oh. Mm. But for a different reason. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, right. <clears throat> before, before we take a short break to the next session, I think uh, uh, Sam uh, has uh, a few things to show, you know, just for about 10 minutes. Sam? Are you there? Yep, I'm up. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do I do with the? I'm just trying to see where I could share the. Your, your, it's sharing. Yeah. Oh, is this sharing? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Got it. We can okay. see it. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show three covers. And, uh, you know, I find it interesting. Anyway, so this one is addressed to uh, Rear Admiral Bird. And you can see that is the Bird Antarctic Expedition, Little America. And then it say entire, and then it got crossed out. So because it got sent back. So uh, initiated from Florida, and you could see the Hong Kong transit just under here, and then it went to New Zealand with three different, you know, front and back, and it got back to Washington because you see that it was returned to sender. So who's this character? So Riemo Bird, he is a naval uh, pilot uh, before the war, and then he actually did two expedition to Antarctic. And this one, the cover was specific to the third one, which he was there. Now, uh, as you can see from the you know flight analysis, it went pretty sure because of the, the strikes of New Zealand, it went to New Zealand and then it was sent back. It was sent back to Washington specifically, go back to, it was sent back to Washington. Now it was care of the Antarctic surface in Washington DC. So it got shipped back. So my question was, I mean, is this the long cover during wartime that got sent back I mean, that came through Hong Kong because, you know, it's it very easy to trace the San Francisco all the way to Hong Kong and then Bangkok and so on to Sydney. That, that's easy. And then this was before Teal startup in April. So this went through, I guess, IA. Richard helped me. Uh, th at that time, Sydney to New Zealand. Is that IA, no. Imperial Airlines? No. No? It's a, uh, Duncan would probably correct me. Um, it was uh, Tasman Airlines. Oh, Tasman. That, that's before TEAL? Because uh, that started uh, in just, April. I think it was just about then. And if, it, if, there were no, if there was no air, it would have just gone by ship. Oh, okay. So it might have gone by ship then. Yeah. Be that's because I, I read it in somewhere that the TU started in April. So anyway, the return, the return, I'm not even sure if it went from uh, from Airmail and didn't go through Hong Kong because there's absolutely no marking until, you know, the, the uh, February. So the last strike was Sydney and then, you know, and then they went back to, uh, you know, uh, to, sure. to Washington. So. Yeah. The first teal flight from Sydney to New Zealand was the 1st of May. Mm, okay, thank you. So it must have gone by uh, yeah. sea. Okay, now another question. Have anybody seen this on a Hong Kong item? So cover was sent December the 12th. So, you know, by that time, you tell me, you know, Kowloon for December 11th. So, of course, they didn't go anywhere. But... It has a marking, as you can see, I blow it up, it's postage refund. 
you know, the, it's good that we actually have one of the top postage due, the UK uh, GB postage due person right here in Toronto, because he wrote the book 300 plus pages just a couple, two years ago. So I went to him and he asked me, yeah, he, he told me exactly what this service is. Supposedly, uh, it didn't it didn't go obviously. So there was no, you know, usually they usually have a strike of no service and so on. But instead, this per particular person or the company, which uh, Davis Sassoon, which is the opium company in Shanghai that went legit and then they moved to Hong Kong and then they moved you know, to the offices in London. So this is from the London office to the Hong Kong office. The refund amount was supposedly from the two shilling six. The refund amount is two shilling four because two penny for the service rate to Hong Kong has been taken out. So, uh, I mean, my question is, people have anybody else got another example? So, and uh, there was a note on the corner that says return 1010. So it, it took you know, October the 10th to be returned to the company. 1042. Yeah, 42, yeah. So the, the last item, it goes with uh, branch marking. Now this is, you know, home, good old Canada. And this is, you know, going from you know, the Bank of Montreal from Victoria, BC to Hong Kong, of all places, Castle Peak. But this has a Yunlong marking. So my, you know, I've, I've, asked, uh, I've asked Richard about this is, has anybody kept record of receiving covers from the branch offices, receiving, okay? So, and I, you know, so I like to know if there is another one, I mean, I'm sure that the receiving mark is probably even rarer than the originating one. We just saw the typo one, which is unique uh, so far. So, you know, so those are my three covers. You know, um, you. For, this, for this one, Atkin, Atkins, uh, it's quite a big correspondence. So mm -hmm. I'd be very surprised if this is the only one, mm -hmm. but it's very interesting uh, as we have discussed a while ago now. Um, but Mrs. Atkins, um, her husband was in Shell, the Dust the Shell Haven, which mm -hmm. had its refinery out in Castle Peak. Mm -hmm. And they also had a town office. So most of the correspondence associated with Atkins were, went to the town. So this is an unusual in that it went out to the uh, new territories. And it would have been delivered, I guess, from Yun Long. I think it'd be interesting. Is uh, post office. I thought Castle Peak would be closer to Chin Wan than Yun Long. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. No, we I know. I also, uh, but if I remember rightly, uh, those uh, places were out beyond Chun Mun. Mm. Okay. Okay. Around Chun Mun. Oh, yeah. Right. It depends where Shell Haven is, right? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. In fact, I think it was closer uh, to, to Ping Shan. But you're right. Many, <laughs> many places on Castle Peak Road from Chun Wan. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have the rare Ping Shan cancel on it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the seal. The seal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. So, and, uh, three questions. Three questions. So, thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure I can't answer your questions, uh, Sam, but uh, anybody on the floor able to answer his questions? Uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah. For the, for the Atkins correspondence, I could add a little bit. I have one cover, which is 1945, late 45, uh, which is to Mr. Atkins. Mr. Atkins was in Stanley Camp, and he was sent out on the hospital ship, the first one that went to Australia. And that, that cover, the interesting thing about that cover, it has uh, Air to Sydney only on it, which is, uh, I think, the latest. Ah. 
It's a very big correspondence. Okay, good. Good, good to hear that. Um, yeah, be before we take the break in about uh, uh, about just less than four minutes time, um, anybody got anything to say? We've got 22 people attending the, the testing, meeting. Testing, testing. The record testing. so far. Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well, uh, Mr. Wong. Okay, thank you. You want to say something? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, you prefer to I say something testing. when we come back after coffee break. Okay. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, yes, we, uh, we just had a, a, a typhoon, Signal 8, on the Tuesday. Uh, I think uh, it, it caused a bit of a havoc uh, around the area, the south side, south side of Hong Kong, uh, where I lived. Um, the trees were blown down. Uh, and uh, certainly a, a free day for me. I, I didn't go to work because uh, of various reasons, um, you know, insurance and things. And just, there's absolutely no, no, no way the cars could pass through. You know, my, my roads were blocked by fallen trees. Anyway, that's, that's we, don't, we don't have fallen trees here. We just have uh, a whole hiatus. So <laughs> going to work here is a just a... <laughs> Out of the question. <laughs> I, I'd just like to say hello to Frank Drake. We had so much fun with the firm chop group, which is sort of kind of dissolved right now. Hello, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the, it's the, uh, the security marking group still active? You know, Rod Snell and, and that lot, you know. They used to send out a lot of emails to everybody. Semi, but we get very little now. We don't find very much anymore. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Good. Well, just keep it up. So let me see. Uh, who is our new guest? Uh, ah, yes. Um, there's the, there's two Chan. There's Charles Chan and. Um, uh, Michael Chen, I think, it's and Chen. Uh, I don't know where where Michael Michael is from. I mean, whether whether he's in Hong Kong or in Australia. And uh, Mr. Wang, Mr. Wang, are you, are you in Hong Kong? You call me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Sure. I'm in Hong Kong. You are in Hong Kong. No, yeah. I thought you were in Kowloon. <laughs> that was just a joke. Sorry about that. Yeah. Kowloon, Hong Kong. Yeah. Mr. Huang. Mr. Huang. Mr. Angel. I, I'm, I, I'm in Hong Kong. Also. You're in Hong Kong. You're not in Shenzhen. Yeah. Huh? You in Shenzhen. I'm in Hong Kong. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 I hope you, I hope you enjoy the, I, I hope you enjoy our, our little meeting uh, on Zoom. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> Okay, right. So uh, yes, as the first session is about to end, um, let's uh, let's see. Um, Richard, are you going to uh, you show something on the second session? Sure, whenever you will. Okay, right. Okay. So um, I can. Yes, I, I, I think it takes uh, will take about ten minutes. So yeah, I always no underestimate. No problem. So I, I'll I'll see you guys uh, in uh, in a couple of minutes then. Okay. So. Long.